The goal of this video is to illustrate how to use proximity sensors in Copilessin. Proximity means the distance. For this, we would use the command read proximity sensor. There are a couple of types of proximity sensors in Copilessin, depending on your applications. You can choose any one of them. We'll just choose the simplest one, the ray type. If you want more information about these various types, you can go to this link. First, let's, let's add a cuboid. Say of uh, length, width, height of 0 0.5. Now let's uh, add a proximity sensor by using add proximity sensor. So we'll choose the ray type. So the sensor is buried in here. Uh, let's pull it out. Okay, so here's the sensor. Now it looks a bit small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of the sensor. So if you go here and click say 0 0.05, you should not be able to see the sensor. Long C. Now, the way the sensor works is it sends a ray and the ray is intercepted by the object. In this case, the ray is pointing upwards. So I want it to be pointing towards the box. So I'll rotate this about the, uh, the green here or the green here, which is uh, the y-axis. So I go to rotate, orientation, 90 degrees about the y-axis. And now you can see that the ray is intersecting the box. Now you see that the ray is broken here and then it extends. So what, what is going on here is basically the range of the sensor. Uh, to, to illustrate the range, let me just move the sensor slightly back along the x-axis. You can see that the ray starts here, ends here. We can control the, the range using uh, the proximity box by just double clicking the proximity, going to volume parameters. The first item offset is this, the, the starting of the ray from the sensor. It is basically uh, simulating that when the sensor is very close to the object, we will not detect the object, but we, won't, we don't want it to be that. So we'll just make it zero. Now you see that the ray is touching the sensor. Second thing we can do is increase the range. So from here it is 0 0.4 meters. Let's just make it one meter. So you can see it extends all the way to the box. Now that we have the proximity sensor, uh, we have the box. Let's write some code which will enable us to detect the distance of this box from the sensor. For that first, I will add a script double click on the script and I'll add some code which will enable us to uh, do what we thought to do. So first of all, I'll get, uh, I'll create an object to the sensor. So let's call that proximity equals get dot sim dot get object. In this case, it would be uh, the same name here proximity with a capital P, P sensor. Okay. I'll be using this sensor in the sensing code. So I'll make it a global variable. Now I need to, now once I've defined proximity, I'm going to start reading data from it. For that, I need to go to the API. This is the API and you can search for proximity. So you see proximity sensors. These are some of the functions associated with proximity sensor. The one I'm going to use is read proximity sensor. Okay, so it gives you synopsis for different um, languages. I'm interested in the Python. So I'm going to take this part of the code and copy paste in sensing. Okay, now what it returns is the, is the following uh, result. It will be zero or one. Zero if it's not detected. One if it's if the if the object is detected, it'll give the distance. 
uh, it'll give the detected point on the object, which we are not quite interested in, but we'll keep that. Otherwise, Python will show throw an error. Uh, it'll also give the object handle, that is the, the handle for the box. It'll also give the surface normal vector, which are, since we are not interested in. So here it needs me to say the sensor handle, and that is called proximity. Okay, so what we'll do here is we'll make it simply print result. So what it means is if the, the box was detected, it will print a one. If the box is not detected, it will print a zero. So the output will be seen here. Let's just run this. And you can see that it's basically saying zero. So let's just move the object slightly closer. So click on proximity, create on move. Here I want to move it along uh, along the x-axis. So this is right. So now it's clear that the red is in the range, but it's still showing zero. And that's because uh, there's a the the way the box is set up by default is that it is not supposed to be be detectable or measurable. So that to change that setting, double click on cuboid, uh, click on um, common, and select detectable and measurable. Okay. Now we'll run this again, and you can see that it is spitting out one, which means that it actually detected the box, and you can see that turns yellow. Okay, so that's showing if the box is detected or not. We also want the distance, so for that, we'll just print the distance. So print. Uh, distance equals plus str distance. And then let's uh, play this. So here it's saying that the distance is 0 0.6. We can actually move this and see how the distance changes. So okay, I need to uh, stop this for a moment. Uh, select proximity sensor, run this. Okay, now I should be able to move the proximity sensor. So you can see that as I'm moving it closer, this distance is changing to change to 0 0.475, goes to 0 0.3, 0 0.27, uh, 0 0.19, 0 0.14, uh, almost goes to zero. And then if you keep going backwards, it goes 0 0.6, 0 0.7. We zoom out. Zoom out more, and then it goes to zero. Now this zero actually means that uh, the object is not in view, right? Uh, so that's something to remember. If the distance is zero, you should be mindful that it may be too close or too far away. Perhaps the last step is to actually plot this uh, data on a graph. For that, we'll create a graph. So add a graph. Uh, we'll create a handle for the graph. So graph equals sim dot get object graph. Uh, we'll make it a global variable. We also need a uh, object for uh, the, the particular line which will be plotted on the time axis. So for that, what we'll do is we'll create a object called graph distance. Uh, I'll add sim dot add graph stream that is adding a stream. This will be the distance stream. Uh, it will be added onto graph. It will measure the distance. Uh, the units are meters and I need to choose a color. So uh, there's another setting which is uh, you can see right here. So handle, string, stream name, that's distance, uh, unit, meters, options. So there's no option, so zero, and then the color. The color would be, uh, let's make it red. Zero comma, one comma zero comma zero, and then close the bracket. Okay, all looks good. I need to make this a global variable. Okay, now that I have defined, created graph and graph distance, what remains is to plot it here. So I'll uh, plot it using 
set graph stream. So sim dot set graph stream. This would be graph. The stream would be graph distance. And what I need to plot here is the distance. Okay, all looks good. Uh, let's run this. Okay, there seems to be an error. And stop. There's no sim. My bad. This should be set graph stream value. Should run fine now. Okay, so you can see that it is basically just at 0 0.6, so all 0 0.6. But we can now change that by using move. Okay, select this. And then uh, here I'm moving it slowly. So you can see that the distance is decreasing. It's 0 0.4 now, 0 0.35 uh two one and almost zero you can go back you increase the distance 